Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Rabbit API course and that is actually the first video of it, the introduction. So by watching that video you can gauge whether this course is something that you've been looking for and if you want to go with it. Right, so the first question that usually comes to mind uh, whenever you think with getting started with Rabbit API is what language should I pick, right? C Sharp or Python? So basically, basically the most important is that pick the one that you like the best. The thing is, it must support .NET, right? We know that Python doesn't support .NET, so therefore we need some kind of a support for you to interact with Rabbit API, right? So the main point is that to interact with Rabbit API, we need that .NET. So that is the main idea. Uh, with Python, we need to use Iron Python. So Iron Python helps us access the .NET. Uh, so basically, you can do stuff that you could do with C Sharp, and um, you can access Rabbit API and and write some code for Rabbit. Right? That is the main idea. That is the rationale behind everything. Uh, so to be honest, I started with Python, but then I realized that, that C Sharp is way much better. So I prefer uh, C Sharp. Uh, Python is so cool when you just uh, get started. So it's really easy to learn. Uh, the learning curve is is kind of is short. It's short, right? You don't need to spend a lot of time uh, understanding tons of things. Right, so you can definitely start with Python if you're uh, if you're really kind of finding yourself in a situation where you cannot get the C sharp right away, right? Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> uh, now let's go to the why I prefer C sharp. So the first thing is that it, it's so cool to write code in Visual Studio where all errors will be highlighted. If I were to compare Actually, um, the main problem with Visual Studio Code, right? So when you actually write in Python, you use that um, editor Visual Studio Code, right? Don't confuse it with Visual Studio, right? Visual Studio is for C Sharp, it's actually for .NET, right? So the whole idea behind this is that uh, not all errors uh, are gonna be highlighted, and even most importantly, the IntelliSense is not going to work that good like it would do in, in Visual Studio, right? So that is the second point. IntelliSense is so helpful and easy to set up compared to Python, right? So meaning that when you write your code, IntelliSense predicts your actions, right? So that helps you kind of uh, write code easier so that it gives you all of the options that you have and you don't need to write everything manually you can set up in python right but you can do it in python but that is really a, a little bit of a complicated thing because when i get started and i downloaded all of this kind of intelligence uh, for visual studio code right something was broken there and uh, i wouldn't get the most out of this so on on my way i would make a lot of mistakes that I wouldn't in, that I wouldn't in C sharp, right? So that is the main idea. Then debug. So debug is of paramount importance. Basically, debugging is is really without learning how to debug your code, you cannot become a great programmer, right? Because there's going to be tons of times when you kind of cannot understand why your code why why your code doesn't work the way you want it to work. Right, so you need to debug. Debug meaning that you're going through your code line by line and see what is happening at some particular time. Right, so not just run your code, but actually you go line by line so you can understand what happens and when uh, error occurs. Right, and the fourth one is that almost all examples are in C sharp. You know, I actually found myself in this situation when I was learning Python and I was learning also uh, Rabbit API that I would need to read everything in C Sharp and, and then do it in Python. And, I, and then I'm like, 
what is the point of learning Python when I can leverage the C sharp and kind of because like I might as well learn the C sharp because I'm reading everything in C sharp, right? So that was the idea. So basically I think that is the four main points why I think that you should prefer C sharp. I know that that can be complicated. Of course, like C sharp is it's really complex one if you just get started, but uh, if you kind of stick with this and learn the basics of this, you can start with, with Revit API. But definitely, you can also start with Dynamo, right? I think the best way to go, actually my way of, uh, my kind of way to, of going to C Sharp is started with Dynamo, right? So I started with Dynamo, then I went to, C, to Python and, and then to C Sharp, right? So then that comes down to what should I start with, right? So basically you picked up the language that you want to go with and what you should start with, right? So syntax is really something that, that is of a vital importance, right? So syntax, so but keep in mind, you can always Google it. There's still some stuff, there are still some stuff that I don't remember, right? But I know how to use it and I know when to use it. Right, so you can always Google it. And actually learning how to Google is one of the most important skills. So then topics that I think that is kind of a, like the baseline of, of getting started with Revit API, right? The minimum of stuff that you need to know. Uh, so C Sharp versus .NET. You really need to understand what is the difference between C Sharp and .NET, right? And what is CLR? primitive types and expressions, non-primitive types, control flow, arrays and lists, debugging, and more. But actually, these ones are, I would call them the baseline, right? <clears throat> but, uh, and you may ask, where do I find the perfect, the perfect course? So I think that guy is an amazing one. So you can actually, uh, uh, b by this link, you can get to his website. Uh, he has this uh, amazing four courses, like three courses, right? The, the ones that you need, like basics. Uh, so I think that is called the uh, yeah the ultimate the ultimate C sharp series. So basically, it contains three parts. Uh, for you to just get started, I, uh, my way actually was that I started with the part one. So I started with Python, uh, with part one, and then I would compare stuff that I did in Python, and I would try to rewrite this in C sharp, and basically I would find some topics that I need to learn from different parts, and that way I almost kind of went through all of them, right? So now I'm finishing actually all of them. So I think that is one of the best courses that I found because first of all that is a structured course, right? Uh, that is one of the most uh, important stuff, right? <clears throat> so now finally, we're getting to Revit API, right? So now you need to, you know what kind of a topics you need to go through, what kind of a course you need to pick up, and now Revit API, right? Uh, so I will show you everything in C Sharp, right? So I'm gonna write everything in C Sharp. But if a lot of people would want Python, I could show the same code written in Python. But actually, again, this course is about Revit API. It's not about language. So if you're using Python, it's okay. You can just follow. I'm going to teach you the documentation. My goal is to teach you how to write something um, like using Revit API and how to read documentation. Because what I found on YouTube that a lot of people are just kind of coding and not explaining why they did these things. But if you really want to solve problems on your own, that is really crucial that you know how to read the documentation. Uh, actually, can you start the course with zero knowledge about C Sharp? Yes, but you need to combine learning C Sharp and Revit API, right? You need to do these things almost simultaneously, right? So what I did is that I found the topic that I have no idea, right, about. So for example, that was with interfaces. So in C Sharp, we have interfaces. And uh, when I would need to actually deal with them in Revit API, I would go first 
Firstly, I would go and learn about them in general, right? So I would go learn about them, maybe create one, understand the, the ins and outs of this, and then I would go and implement them, right? Um, and the main question is why to follow their course, right? So I will teach you how to solve problems and how to read Revit API documentation. So I think that instead of kind of going through all possible topics, I could show you uh, all of the like the most important stuff and teach you how to solve problems uh, through Revit API and then you can do them on your own, right? Uh, so now uh, we're going to get to Revit API topics, right? <clears throat> so what I think these are the topics that each of you need to follow to have this uh, kind of base, right? For actually being able to deal with any problem, right? So I think each programmer, each Revit developer is going to come, uh, kind of comes to the point where he went through all of the difficulty, right? He went through all of the kind of main topics and now he can deal with any problem, right? Any obstacle, right? Uh, so first of all, it starts with element selection, right? You need to know how to select elements, how to do something with them, right? Then working with parameters, right? Then understanding document, UI document, application, UI application, geometry, transform of elements, working with Revit file, working with view, filters, schedules, right, with annotations, with linked files, with families, then we will come, I think that should be like the last thing, right, plugin development. So I'm going to show how to build your custom ribbon, tabs, panels, stuff like that, right, and then it's going to be all about miscellaneous stuff. So after this, uh, my YouTube video, my YouTube uh, YouTube channel will be all about kind of different scripts uh, and some stuff like that, right? So I want you to get started with this and then um, and then work with just some scripts. <clears throat> so the next thing is how to learn. I think that is something that um, you should really uh, learn a, a lot about it, like how to learn and. Uh, so first of all, stick with one problem and don't go at multiple stuff simultaneously. That was my problem actually. Uh, because of not being able to deal with one problem, I would go at another one. It's not like that. If you want to be a programmer um, or just code for Revit, it's really important that you stick with one and deal with this, right? So you really need to cultivate that approach that you never give up and there's no other guy that can do that for you. Then spend more time practicing than watching. Don't just think that by watching the course, you can uh, actually become a great programmer. Programmer is a problem solver. To become a problem solver, you need to solve them on your own, not by watching this. I will try on my way, right? I will try to uh, come up with some um, uh, uh, challenges for you, right? So you can really practice a lot. Then learn programming every day. Uh, that one is crucial. Actually, uh, you need to, it's called like, don't be a fair weather rabbit developer, right? Show up even in bad days, right? You have to be willing to stick to it in any mood, in any mood, right? So that is the sweet spot, actually. That is the time when that is like the most important stuff happening, right? When you kind of, overcoming all of these obstacles and you just learn this, right? And um, uh, don't beat yourself up. If you don't want to, you can take one day off, uh, right? But it's better to learn every day, at least for some times you need to, uh, if you feel really down, you can learn for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but just learn, maybe not do anything, maybe learn what he did yesterday. That can be quite beneficial also. And with time, you will kind of grow into it, right? And uh, it doesn't matter even if you forgot about something. Then if you would need to use this, you will again learn about this and catch on. Uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about is books to read that are not related to programming. So I think that is um, really crucial to not only 
be educated about Revit and the stuff that you're doing, but also generally like how to learn, how to stick with stuff, how to be consistent, right? And how to persevere. So you can actually, uh, if you start with something, you finish it, right? Uh, so I would recommend two books. You can, that is the one that I've read recently. You can uh, use some other books, but the main idea of two of those books is that it depends on what problems you may have, right? So if you have some problem with sticking with and uh, with being consistent with something, right? And do this on a daily basis, I would recommend that you read um, this one, right? That is a great book, Atomic Habits. Uh, right, so you can pick this one. Uh, that one is actually my favorite one. I've read this like maybe a couple of times. Uh, that what that one helped me tremendously and totally changed the way I learn. Uh, so um, reading this book helped me um, kind of learn and solidify the information that I know before and implement everything. Right, so now. I'm sure that when I learn stuff, I know that I'm gonna remember them and I'm gonna be able to use them when I need to. <clears throat> so basically that is all of the stuff that I wanted to talk about. So to sum up again, if you're not sure what language to use, you can always Google it and read up about this, right? But my general, like uh, the whole point of, the way I think about this, like, um, is that if you want to work a lot with Dynamo, uh, right? And if you uh, and you want to leverage the Dynamo, right? I would use Python, right? Because you can use Python in C Sharp. Of course, you can create your custom nodes with uh, with C Sharp, but Python is um, is a great language to use for Dynamo, right? So if I if I if I were asked to build something cool in Dynamo, I would definitely use Python. Uh, so yeah, if you want to use that in Dynamo, I would pick Python. If you want to use that, if you want to create plugins and leverage the power of this, I would use C Sharp. So again, it's up to you. If you're hesitating, like read up on this, learn more about this, and you'll definitely pick up the one that you want. So I think that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you find this content useful, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.